once around jumbos. So there was a James Webb Space Telescope survey which was published earlier in this uh, last 12 months and it was looking into the core of the Orion Nebula 35 hours of telescope time using the near cam near infrared camera looking right into the core of the trapezium cluster which is in the photograph there right in the center you can see the four bright stars and all the lesser ones around it part of the central region and what they were looking for was the signature of free floating or rogue planets planets that are just moving through space not in orbit round a parent star and in particular they were looking for gas giants, Jupiter-sized planets. There was a, always an issue with this in that we were finding lots of stars of different masses and even quite a few brown dwarfs, but there was a sort of cut-off point below the size of a brown dwarf where we weren't finding very much. And it seemed likely that nature was managing to make many of these gas giant planets um, just independently of their uh, parent stars or uh, possibly being ejected from orbits around the protostars during the star system formation phase, which can be quite chaotic. So it seemed like a fertile ground for a survey. Well, the data from the infrared camera was put through 12 different filters. You can see in the bottom chart there, the uh, thing that looks like yellow teeth along the bottom are the bandwidths of the different infrared filters. And by looking at these particular wave bands, you can essentially create a low resolution spectrum of the infrared light. So we have the uh, light curves there with the points on them corresponding to the filters and you can see what we're detecting and then at the top there's a model of the typical spectrum that you might ex might get um, with infinite resolution for an object which might be a free floating planet with water H2O with methane and carbon monoxide um, CO and CH4 in the atmosphere there and certainly it looks a little bit like the dip that we see for methane there is being seen in the image and possibly the water dip at the left hand side uh, so the shapes not a bad fit well the idea was to look for these free-floating planets by trying to detect these molecules in the atmospheres there, looking at regions and seeing if there were places where we could spot an excess of these molecular signatures. Interesting way of finding planets. And they found 540 of them, which is quite a big uh, hall for a fairly modest region within the core of the Orion Nebula solving that problem and suggesting that actually yes we do get a lot of these but interestingly of those 540 nine percent of them were binaries or triplets I think this the numbers were 40 binaries and two triplets that we seem to have detected and the binaries go by the name of Jupiter Mass Binary Objects, or JUMBOs. You've got to have a good acronym, haven't you? So these are pairs of planet mass objects in orbit round each other with no parent star. And the bottom picture is an artist's rendition of what that might look like if you were to get up close. And the detection in the image is shown in summary at the top there with Jumbo 033 in the uh, center on the right hand side there. Now these objects are somewhere in the range 890 to 2520 Kelvin so that's uh, warm well pretty hot actually 900 degrees is uh, getting fairly hot uh, but 2500 is not quite red hot which would be about 3000 
and these are the sort of temperatures you get increasing in temperature with increasing mass for these uh, sub dwarfs these Jupiter mass objects somewhere between 0.7 and 13 Jupiter masses uh, for reference Saturn is about 0.33 of a Jupiter mass so this is slightly smaller than Jupiter up to considerably larger but the upper bound of 13 is set as a hard limit anything greater than 13 times the mass of Jupiter we class as a brown dwarf all the way up to 75 times um, when we think that nuclear fusion would be initiated and you would get a red dwarf a low mass star so brown dwarfs in that 13 to 75 MJ region. Anything below 13 MJ is classed as a sub-dwarf planet, um, a gas giant if you like, uh, and uh, that's certainly where we found these jumbos, these Jupiter mass binary objects to be. Now the question is where do these things come from? Are they formed just like stars in situ on their own self gravity pulling little knots of material in the nebula together? Um, or perhaps they're, they're too small for that. Perhaps there are too many binaries. It did seem like 9% turning up as binaries was too many for that sort of formation. Now, the other way that they might get created is in orbit round. A star, as we think, occurred in our solar system for our giant planets. And in fact, we have simulations that suggest we possibly started with a total of five gas giant planets and that one was subject to a gravitational slingshot and hurled out due to a close encounter in the chaos of the early solar system. And so maybe out in deep space somewhere still within the gravitational reach of the Sun or perhaps even ejected entirely from the Sun's reach and lost forever. Well uh, that's certainly a possibility for free-floating planets. Um, some people have suggested that near misses with another star might rip planets out of orbit as well but such things are probably rather rare. And either of those two seem unlikely as a source of creating binaries. So neither of these or none of these possible formation routes seem to fit with creating these binaries, either because there are too many of them or the, the objects are too small or um, because the creating a binary that way just doesn't make any sense. Well, from what we found from the separation between the binaries, anything from about 28 to 384 AU astronomical units, that's the Earth-Sun distance, so Neptune is 30 AU from the Sun, so this is from the orbit of Neptune out to uh, uh, 10 or 15 times that. And that actually fits with some of the theory about how such things might occur. Um, trying to form them in tighter orbits is more difficult and trying to form them further away from each other and end up as binaries is also difficult for different reasons. If they were too close to each other it'd be hard to build two large objects because the accretion disks of material in falling to build them up would tend to touch and so you'd end up with them spiralling into each other. And if they were too far apart, it's hard to see how they would remain bound due to perturbations from many other objects. So this seems to be in the ballpark. So now the radio telescopes got in on the act. The VLA, the Very Large Array out there in the desert, those uh, triangularly arranged dishes, started looking for these objects and mapping them and uh, detected radio emissions in the... 6 to 10 gigahertz bands suggestive of charged particles in trapped 
uh, bands caused by magnetic fields around these objects, much as we see radio emissions from Jupiter. So it seemed reasonable, and the map at the top there is the radio map homing in on Jumbo 24, and the white square in the centre, that's where we think uh, Jumbo 24 was, so it seems well centred on it. Uh, and we're thinking that Jumbo 24 might be a pair of quite large 11.5 Jupiter mass objects, just 28 AUs apart, so close and on the large side. And of course that's what happens when you first go looking for things, you find the ones that are easy to find. We also were able to confirm Jumbo 29, and this is actually an optical image of Jumbo 29. The two objects there, the bright one at mass 12.5 Jupiter masses, and its smaller 3 Jupiter mass companion there, 135 AU apart, orbiting round each other. Now the larger one is pretty much on that limit. It's almost large enough to be classed as a brown dwarf. Um, and that makes sense because the larger the object, the more gravity it has. So the more it's able to hang on to a uh, an orbiting companion. So that sort of fits with uh, theory quite nicely. Um, now... What's interesting is that when we look at other clusters, such as the upper Scorpius cluster region, just uh, above the uh, star clouds in Ophiuchus there, um, all of those individual little red circles, those are free-floating rogue planets, uh, Jupiter-mass planets that have been found, but we couldn't find any of them being jumbos, no binaries. Now, this particular cluster, nebula, whatever you want to call it, is considerably older than the Orion Nebula, where the jumbos were found. And that might make sense, because being older, there's been that much more time for gravitational evolution and the spreading out of the stars of the new star cluster, and indeed the free-floating planets, and also more time for them to have had gravitational interactions and get hurled out and indeed disrupted as binaries because we do think that gravitational slingshot tends to disrupt binary pairs to the extent that theory tells us we should have lost 98% of the binary pairs in the first 10 million years. So maybe that's why we're not seeing any in this older cluster, whereas the Orion Nebula being much, much younger than 10 million years, more like 1 million years, maybe even 200,000 years since the jumbos were formed, uh, it's entirely possible that... Uh, we're still seeing some. But in a paper just published in December of 2024, Lumen et al. suggested that maybe the interpretation is wrong. Uh, so there's more work to do on this one. The detection images over on the right-hand side, the Lumen and his collaborators went through them, looking at them in a different way, looking at the spectrum and the light in more detail. And they found that poor old Jumbo 24 that the VLA had homed in on seems to be actually a red dwarf star in the background being seen through the dust of the Orion Nebula, making it look redder and creating that illusion in the spectrum. And that, uh, well, the whole list of others there, numbers t 3, 5, 6 and so on, were also background sources shining through the nebula. And he also stated that 26 of the remaining 40, uh, of the total of 40 rather, were too faint for the analysis to really be effective. So it knocked the total down to only around 10 that uh, w were not either deemed impossible to tell or completely ruled out. So actually that's divided the total from 40 down to 10, which makes more sense in terms of the numbers of surviving binaries 
given the young age of the cluster. So not so many jumbos out there in space as we thought. So thanks very much for listening to that one, and I hope you enjoyed it.